In the early to mid-2000s, consumers started mainstream adoption of HD high-definition televisions all over the world. The new high-definition revolution created a need for an inexpensive storage medium that was capable of holding the substantial data that would be required for high-definition video for movies and TV shows to be able to be delivered to consumers' homes. As a result, we ended up with one of the most famous format wars in the world of physical media in the battle between Blu-ray and HD DVD. Now, not every new technology required a format war. In fact, the DVD standard was completely unified and championed by the DVD forum, and the HD TV standard was all unified behind the Grand Alliance. Even huge pieces of tech like wireless networking and Wi-Fi were all standardized by the Wi-Fi Alliance. However, when it came to HD physical media, the Blu-ray versus HD DVD format war was going to drag out a little bit longer. Now, the earliest days of the high-definition format war came with a groundbreaking invention from Shuji Nakamura's Blue Laser Diode. This innovation created a shorter wavelength for discs and optical media, and it opened the door to higher density optical media after a very long six-year patent dispute. Now, Sony immediately seized this opportunity and they initiated two projects that would apply the new blue laser diodes, the Ultra Density Optical and, in collaboration with Pioneer, DVR Blue. The first DVR Blue prototypes were unveiled at the SeaTech exhibition in October of 2000, and on February 19th of 2002, the project was officially announced as Blu-ray, and the Blu-ray Disc Association was founded by a group of nine electronics companies. However, on the DVD side, the DVD forum, which at the time was chaired by Toshiba, was still deeply divided. They were very uncertain about embracing these more expensive blue lasers, which would require a protective caddy to prevent mishandling and would make the medium a lot costlier and also physically distinct from their standardized DVDs. In August of 2002, Toshiba announced that they had a competing standard to Blu-ray, which they called Advanced Optical Disc. This was adopted by the DVD forum and later renamed to HD DVD the following year. For the next few years, the technology kind of went back and forth. HD TV was not fully adopted yet, and both the Blu-ray Disc Association and the DVD forum attempted to negotiate a compromise, which came to a head in early 2005. Blu-ray supporters favored the Java-based BDJ, while the DVD forum was backing Microsoft's iHD format. And this was a big piece of early Blu-rays and HD DVD, was all of the interactive features which were added to the disc. Now, unfortunately, these negotiations did collapse, and by the end of June in 2005, Sun Microsystems, who is the developer of Java, announced that Blu-ray Association has selected their interactive layer over Microsoft's. At the same time, Microsoft and Toshiba revealed that they were going to cooperate in developing high-definition DVD players, and they were going their own way. There was some real back and forth, especially between Microsoft and Bill Gates. He was arguing that the Blu-ray standard had to adapt to work more smoothly with personal computers, and that was really his focus point. In fact, the personal computer manufacturers actually jumped in as well when Hewlett Packard HP gave an ultimatum to the Blu-ray Disc Association demanding that they adopt Microsoft's interactive HDI instead of the Java-based system or they would not be including support for Blu-ray on their systems. However, the Blu-ray disc group did not bite, and they opted not to take Microsoft's interactive layer and keep moving on their own. And so finally in 2006, these players hit the market. Now, HD DVD was actually the first to market on April 18th of 2006. The first Blu-ray titles followed up on June 20th of 2006, just a couple of months later, and by October of 2006, the Blu-ray discs were already using dual-layer 50 gigabyte discs. And so with that, the Blu-ray vs. HD DVD format war had officially began, and consumers were given two competing standards, which each had their own advantages and disadvantages. But ultimately, the war was really more than just format superiority, it was a battle for market dominance, because we had two corporate behemoths leading the charge in each camp. On the Blu-ray side, you had Sony, who was a powerhouse in the consumer electronics industry and had an extensive product line which ranged from TVs to gaming consoles, players, and all sorts of audio equipment. 
However, Toshiba wasn't willing to back down with their support of HD DVD, and they were leveraging their own range of electronics and industry influence that they developed through the DVD forum. So while Sony and Toshiba both had their own range of electronics and certainly each had industry influence, especially with Sony owning its own entertainment arm, the real key to the format war was the video game consoles. And this is where Sony won the war. While Blu-ray and HD DVD were both fighting it out, there was also a console war which played a pivotal role in this physical media format war. Sony had the PlayStation 3 console, and Toshiba and Microsoft had the Xbox 360 and their HD DVD add-on. When Sony released the PlayStation 3, however, they decided to include a Blu-ray player as part of the console. It was a standard add-on, which did make it a more expensive console, but it also significantly boosted the Blu-ray format because it ensured that every household with a PlayStation 3 also had a Blu-ray player without any need for an additional purchase. On the other side of things, Toshiba's HD DVD format was not included with the Xbox 360. Instead, it was offered as an additional add-on, which cost almost $200, which was a significant amount of money at the time, still is today, and really soured people on the format. I think that this format war could have gone a different way if the HD DVD format was included with the Xbox 360 in the same way that Sony smartly included the Blu-ray player in the PlayStation 3. Now, the war wasn't just about players. It definitely was also about content and which studios were on which side of the format. As the formats developed, the major Hollywood studios began to align themselves with either one format or the other and would usually release their films exclusively on either Blu-ray or HD DVD. Both sides had pretty large studios backing them, with Blu-ray getting support from influential studios such as, of course, Sony Pictures, but also Disney and 20th Century Fox, while HD DVD secured both Universal Studios and Warner Brothers. However, I think the biggest player here at the time was Disney, given what we know about how many copies of movies that Disney sold on VHS and DVD. The fact that Disney went with Blu-ray really tipped the scales into the favor of the Blu-ray format because consumers who were fans of those studios, like Disney, had to make a choice. And based on Disney, 20th Century, and Sony Pictures, they just had more popular titles that were available exclusively on Blu-ray. So this, combined with the fact that there were simply more Blu-ray players out there inside of the PlayStation 3, really shifted support towards Blu-ray. Now, of course, the formats themselves also had inherent differences, which did play a role in the outcome of the war. For example, Blu-ray discs boasted a much larger storage capacity, which enabled them to hold more HD content, which was really pivotal when it came to an HD format war, because the Blu-ray could offer better picture and better sound quality, so it made it a preferred choice for consumers who really wanted that ultimate viewing experience and had invested in their home theaters. So while Blu-ray could store up to 50 gigabytes of data, HD DVD maxed out at just 30 gigabytes. The extra storage space on Blu-ray did allow for higher bit rates, so you got better picture quality and better transfers, and you typically get better sound like DTS HD Master Audio or Dolby True HD. In fact, you could also include more special features because there was just simply more room on the discs. So as we got into 2008, it was pretty clear that one format was going to lose this war, and that format was HD DVD. Blu-ray simply had too many things going in its favor, which included broader content support and more studios behind it, a better storage capacity, which meant better picture quality, better audio quality, and that built-in player into the PlayStation 3 was just a game changer. So in February of 2008, Toshiba finally gave in and announced it would cease the development, manufacturing, and marketing of all HD DVD players and recorders. Now, on that same day, they lost the support of Universal Studios and Warner Brothers, who announced that they would start to release their titles on the Blu-ray disc format. Just two days later, Paramount Pictures also announced that it would fully back Blu-ray and it was the last major studio to jump off of HD DVD. By March of 2008, we had the last HD DVDs released from both Universal and Paramount, which included Things We Lost in the Fire, Into the Wild, Fletch, and Atonement. As of March 2008, 
HD DVD was officially dead and all future releases which had been planned were totally scrapped. Soon after, Microsoft stopped the production of their Xbox 360 HD DVD players and the format was officially dead. There was no player support, there was no studio support, there was no way that HD DVD was going to survive. Now, following the death of HD DVD, a few studios did do some interesting promotions. Warner Home Video actually did one where they announced they would give you the Blu-ray equivalent for up to 25 of your HD DVDs and that they would only charge you for shipping and handling. Now, in the era of streaming services and 4K UHD Blu-ray, it's easy to overlook the significance of a format war like this, but these format wars really do have a profound impact on technology, and they really shape the future of tech, whether it be physical media or software, hardware, no matter what. These wars are where the innovation comes from. So before I sign off today, I'd love to hear your experiences and thoughts on the format war. I was a little too young and I wasn't paying attention to it. But for those of you out there who were collecting during that time, did you pick a side? Did you have a preference, Blu-ray or HD DVD? I'd love for you to share your memories, share your opinions in all the comments below. But that's a wrap on today's video. Hope you enjoyed this immersive journey back in time to the Blu-ray versus HD DVD format war. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more physical media movie content like this. And of course, follow me on social media for all the links and ways to get in touch with me. So thanks for joining us today. I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll talk to you soon.